Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. It's been a while. It may not have seemed like that long to you, but I actually have been out of town. I've been gone for the last three weekends. So I was in Korea, um, I was there for 10 days, and then I came back, and then last minute I went to Coachella weekend two because my friend invited me. So it's been kind of a whirlwind month, and I honestly haven't sat down to film in, yeah, almost a month. So it feels very strange, but I'm happy to be here. I hope you guys are all doing well. I thought I would do just kind of like a casual video today because I did a lot of beauty shopping while I was in Korea. I knew I would, I had planned for it. I actually didn't shop the Sephora sale because I wanted to shop in Korea. So I thought I would just kind of like show you what I got, maybe throw in some clips of my trip, of shopping, of the things I ate. It was a really wonderful trip. Um, I was there by myself. I met up with people I knew, but um, I had quite a bit of solo time and that was really nice too. So I'm gonna show you everything I bought, all the beauty stuff. I did buy some fashion stuff, but I am not gonna try it on for you today. But we'll go through all of the beauty stuff because there's honestly so much and um, I'm really excited to share it with you. Some of these things you may be familiar with, but a lot of these are new brands to me, things I haven't talked about on my channel or brands I've never tried. So let's get into it. So let's start with my Olive Young haul. I, uh, <laughs> well, if you've never been to Korea, um, you may have heard of Olive Young. It's like the biggest beauty retailer in Korea. They have everything from affordable stuff to high end, and they stock Korean beauty, Japanese beauty, Western beauty, French pharmacy beauty, just like everything. And there's one or two on like every city block, it feels like. It's a huge, huge retailer and Everyone shops there from Koreans to foreigners to Westerners, people who are, you know, visiting tourists, all of that. So I went into an Olive Young, I think like at least once every day on my trip, um, if not multiple times a day. So everything I have is in this bag, um, I think. I actually came home with like three bags, but I just condensed everything. So this is the result of um, several trips to Olive Young over my like less than two weeks. So the first thing I always do when I hit an Olive Young is I go to the SPFs because you guys know I love my Korean SPFs. I think they're so elegantly formulated. They have advanced filters that we don't have here in the US. And because of that, they're really cosmetically elegant, they're sheer, and they're really affordable as well. So I'm gonna start with my SPF haul. I went a little bit nuts because it's almost summer here, so I just know my like SPF use is about to go up. So in no particular order, I'm gonna go through all the sunscreens. The first one I picked up is by Round Round. I've actually never tried this SPF. Um, a lot of these I will say are available in the US or in Western markets. I will link like Yes Style and Style Vana, all of that stuff below because I think actually most of these things you can get your hands on, including this. So um, this is a popular SPF. I've actually never tried it. And in Olive Young, when you're shopping, they do a lot of one plus one deals, which is basically buy one, get one free. So obviously I did that. This is um, actually every SPF I think I got is SPF 50 plus PA4 pluses. So it's their green tea, Sika watery sun cream, SPF 50 plus PA4 pluses. It's very cosmetically elegant. Um, just comes in a squeezy tube. I mean, I don't need to swatch the sunscreen for you, but I'll just show you what the texture is like. So it starts out as a cream and it does feel really hydrating. And then there's just like no white cast at all. It's just so lovely and it doesn't feel too wet. It actually feels pretty creamy, this formula. So I think it's gonna be really nice um, to use almost as my moisturizer during the summer or over moisturizers as well. And then it kind of sets down to like, not a matte finish, but it has like a velvety touch to it. So I can already tell I'm gonna like it. And in store actually you're able to like touch and feel and try out the SPFs, which is really, really nice. Actually, now that it's setting down, I'm like, yeah, it does have kind of a velvety 
matte grippy feel, which is probably why I bought it in the store. So that one's really nice. Another very popular SPF that has actually gained a lot of traction, I feel like in the American social media sphere and like the Western market is the Round Lab um, Birch Tree SPF. They call it the Tadak Namu SPF. So this one, um, it's not a one plus one, but you do get like a deluxe size. So you get this little guy and then you get the, oops, and then you get the um, full size SPF. I don't think this one is open yet, so I'm not going to open it just so I can keep it a little bit fresh, but it's kind of the same idea with all of these SPFs. It's lightweight, hydrating, fluid, sheer, high SPF coverage. And um, yeah, I'm excited to try it. I actually haven't tried this formula yet. Then the same formula actually comes in cushion form. And this is a very popular format in Korea. I mean, it's so smart. I wish we had these in the US. So it's essentially a cushion foundation, same formula as the lotion but you get this really cute cushion compact. You can pop it open here. You get the cushion puff. And once you peel this back, you actually get like a cushion that's loaded with sunscreen. So it makes reapplication really easy. I mean, it makes application on its own easy, but it also makes reapplication over makeup easy. And I kind of wish I had actually picked up a couple more of these just because I feel like I admit I'm not the best at reapplying SPF over makeup when I'm out and about. Um, and it's just nice to have something like this to make it a little bit easier, especially if you're out having a long day, you know you're going to be outside, you're at the pool, at the beach, whatever. It just makes application so nice. And I will say you don't just wanna go putting like a regular lotion SPF into a cushion compact because SPFs are formulated with their particular packaging in mind. That's actually why I bought an SPF that already comes in a cushion rather than making my own, just because you don't wanna mess with the stability of the SPF filters. Otherwise that really ruins the point of doing all of this. Another one plus one pack I got is the Goodall Heartleaf Calming Moisture Sun Cream SPF 50 PA4 Pluses. So I'm very familiar with Goodall's um, uh, skincare. I really like their vitamin C. I really like their toners. They just make really nice skincare. And I actually had not seen this SPF before. Um, I don't think, again, it's not available in the US, but it is available through other websites. So this is a really lovely sunscreen. It comes in this like cute little tube and it's actually a bit more lightweight in texture, I think, than the round round formula, the very first one that I showed you. This one sinks in a little bit more quickly and it's slightly more lightweight, um, although it doesn't have the same like velvety set down, I don't think but I'm um, really excited to use this this summer. This is this one's also, I think, formulated like with sensitive skins in mind, hence the calming name. Um, I don't actually really know what heart leaf is. Um, something Cordata, calming moisture sun cream. So yeah, I bought a lot of calming products just because especially going into summer, I'm prone to redness or like heat in the skin, rosacea, all of that. So you'll see that throughout this haul. Here's a new brand to me. This is called Be Plain and I saw them, I mean, they were really like pushing these on the end caps and stuff. Um, so I thought I would try it. This is their Sun Muse Moisture Sunscreen SPF 50 plus PA4 pluses. This is another pack that comes with the regular size and then like the deluxe size. But here's what it looks like. So it's got a similar lightweight lotion consistency it does feel actually even more fluid or almost like, I mean, it's lotion-y, but a little bit more gel-like than um, the round, round one or even the Goodall one that I just tried. So I think this one's gonna be really nice for oily skin or combo skin types. I'm telling you, I went hard on the sunscreen. So this one I'm actually really excited about. This is a spray sunscreen. I got it in a pack of two, the other one I'm already using. And this is a new brand to me called Shingmulnara. 
And I've seen some of their products like on Stylevana or Yes Style, but not this spray's SPF specifically. But I am really excited about it because it is an aerosol SPF, but it has such a quick dry down. I mean, it's completely sheer, very, very lightweight. And it's really hard, honestly, to formulate a spray SPF. <coughs> Sorry, <laughs> I totally just inhaled that. <coughs> Okay, I'm back, she's fine. It's really hard to formulate a spray SPF that feels this elegant and lightweight and doesn't look or feel greasy on the skin. I think just something about the spray mechanism needing to keep it lightweight and fluid, um, it's just hard to formulate. And this, the second I felt it in store, I was like, yes, I'm gonna need two of those. So definitely gonna test this out. Hopefully I can link it below or find it at some point. And the last SPF I got was the CNP Outdoor Fluid Sun. So this is a new formula to me. I really like CNP skincare. I especially love their Propolis Serum. But this is a new formula to me. It's waterproof SPF 50, PA4 pluses. I did try it in store. This has a bit more of like a gel consistency. And I did feel like I could tell as I was blending it in that it has a really um, like grippy setting quality to it, which all of the best, you know, waterproof SPFs have. You want it to create that like film over your face so that it's really, really on there, sweat proof, waterproof, all of that. And it has a really nice kind of matte velvety dry down as well. So that is all of the SPFs I got, I think. Oh my gosh, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different types with multiple tubes of some of them. But, you know, I was on a mission. I'm scouting out the best SPFs for us, so I will link them all below. Let's move on to the other skincare I got at Olive Young. Um, I, again, wanted to try out new brands. So this is from the same brand, Be Plain, as um, this one. So these are the same brand, Be Plain. This is their Sika Terol Toner. So it's a very like bouncy kind of viscous looking toner. It's something like 98, 99% Centella Asiatica. So it's very calming, it's hydrating. That's the whole point of this line. And um, yeah, I, I really wanted to try out a few different like fluid hydrating toners. You'll see some others that I got from Sephora, but this is the one that I got from Olive Young. And I just, I really like sheer juicy hydrating layers in the summer rather than thick occlusive products, especially because I'm so congestion prone. So yeah, I'm really excited to try this. I think it's gonna be a winner. For a body product, I really love the Iliun body lotions and creams, especially this line. So this is the Ceramide Auto Concentrate Cream. If you have eczema, if you have sensitive skin, rosacea, dermatitis, all of that, this line is amazing. And they also make a thicker um, lotion. The key ingredient in this line is ceramide, so it's going to really strengthen your skin barrier, fortify the skin, calms the skin, and this line is fragrance-free as well. And I know you can get this online, so I'll link it below. Let's get into some Olive Young makeup. So I knew I wanted to grab a bunch of mascaras just because K-Beauty mascaras are amazing and the exchange rate is really good over there. So I grabbed um, quite a few mascaras. The first one I grabbed is a two pack of the Clio Kill Lash Super Proof Mascara. And I'm actually wearing another version of the Kill Lash Mascara right now. I really love them. They're best sellers in Korea. But this is the... Um, sleek volume version, which I haven't tried. I think I tried one of their lengthening versions. So um, it's a little bit different than the one that I have on, but the brush is really, really nice. It's small, but it's curved and it has the bristly texture. So I think it's gonna be nice for building volume, but not um, overly voluminous. It's going to be like lengthening and volumizing at the same time, I think. This is a new brand to me. It's called Lily by Red, and this is their AM to PM Survival Color Cara. So they're colored mascaras, and how cute is this? This is their branding. So um, Lily by Red, this color really, really stood out to me. It's number two, rosy brown, 
and it's definitely a rosy brown. It's almost like a maroon colored mascara. I actually haven't tried it yet, but I'm really excited to try it because these kinds of tones really make brown eyes pop. I wear, you know, eyeliners in this tone a lot. I wear eyeshadows in this tone a lot, but I haven't tried a mascara in this particular tone. So I'm excited to try that. And then while I was there, I had to grab two of my mascara primers that I love. This is the Peripera Ink Mascara Fixer. I wear it almost every day with every mascara. If you have issues with um, smudging, with your curl dropping, any of that, definitely try this. It's very, very affordable. Then I grabbed a K-Beauty lip tint and I feel like lip tint formulas just keep getting better and better. Even just like a couple of years ago um, when K-Beauty lip tints like were first becoming really popular, they were really nice, but I felt like they would sometimes gather in lip lines or get a little bit clumpy or uneven. And this is why I feel like they're getting better. So this is the um, Clio Dewy Blur Lip Tint in the shade 05 Caramel Pumpkin. It says it has a soft touch blurred effect. I actually haven't, um, worn this for like long periods of time yet, but well, let me show you the tube. It's actually really cute. So you get this cute little tube and it has like this groove here and a little doe foot applicator. And here is what it looks like. It's such a nice tone. It's kind of peachy, kind of warm, very much a me sort of tone. And it does have a sheen to it, but it's not, really glossy. It's, um, yeah, dewy blurred. <laughs> it's, it's not like a glassy shine. There's a dewiness, but, um, I'm excited to test this out a little bit more. And then the last makeup thing that I picked up is so cute. So this is by Holika Holika. It's called the Jelly Dough Blusher and it comes in a little compact. I have the shade number 04 Nuts Jelly and how adorable is this tiny baby cushion? And then you open it up and this texture just really got me. So it's this really interesting, like bouncy formula. It almost reminds me of like the MAC um, Glow Play blushes or the newer Half Magic Beauty blushes. So it's like bouncy, but it's even bouncier, like even more clay-like. You can see like the imprint of my finger. I don't think this is gonna be super, super pigmented. Um, it just has this really nice like pastel diffused cloud-like effect. I mean, K-Beauty in general is not really about bright, intense pigment. It's more about like sheer washes of color and um, like barely there natural makeup. So I feel like this is very much like along that line, but I'm excited to play with it. Mostly, I just love the texture. I just think it's so fun. Um, but I do think there's some buildability here, so I'll have to try it out on the face. Actually, there's one um, Olive Young thing I forgot to show you. So this is the um, brand called Bring Green. It's new to me, hadn't seen it before. Um, and this seems to have won a bunch of awards, like on the label you can see, um, and I had never heard of it. And they have an Artemisia line, which I really, really love. Um, Artemisia is amazing for calming, soothing, bringing down redness. So this is, again, a one plus one pack, but you get the Artemisia um, calming repair cream as like a tube in tube form, and then you also get it in jar form. And Artemisia is, um, if you've tried Mugwort, there I think it's like the same thing. So the um, I'm from Mugwort line, I love that. And then you get this in jar form as well. And I think this contains 54% Artemisia essence, which is really nice. You like to see those high concentrations um, of ingredients like this. So I'm excited to try it out. And I think it's nice that it comes in two different forms. Um, and then I also grabbed the uh, these eye patches. So um, they're literally eye patches that you activate. These are actually Japanese. 
Um, I, I got them and then I forgot to use them, but I was traveling with some friends who were like, you need to try them. So you activate them like a sleep mask and then they get a little bit warm and these are lavender infused. So you get the scent of lavender, but there are other versions of this as well. And it's supposed to like calm, relax, depuff the eyes a little bit before you go to bed. And I totally forgot about them. So I'm definitely gonna be using this tonight. I'm gonna move on to my Sephora Korea purchases. I actually didn't buy a ton of stuff at uh, Sephora. Um, I definitely looked, but um, obviously I've, I had already spent a lot of money, but I did grab uh, some stuff from this new brand that I hadn't seen called Koi, K-O-Y. It's called the Flow Lifting Ample Toner. And the woman who was working there, she was very cute, she was like, this is so popular right now, like everyone loves it. It's like Botox in a bottle, it's lifting. Of course she was like giving me the hard sell and it honestly didn't take that much to convince me. But um, that's because I was already looking for a hydrating toner and I wanted to try something different, something new. So this is the toner. I feel like the packaging is very chic, very sleek, minimal. I feel like the branding of of this brand is is very much that even their other products and like their whole lineup was very sleek and sexy so i to be honest don't know much about <laughs> this toner so it says it's for radiance anti-wrinkle so it's a toner and ampule together so it has kind of a viscous texture it's not like a super watery toner and i think the um like key ingredient in this is snowflake extract. Don't know what that is. It has antioxidants, um, moisture management, lifting and water lock formulation. I don't really know. I mean, I don't think there's active ingredients in here. It has botanicals and it's hydrating and lifting. We'll see about that. Um, but anyway, I like playing around in the hydrating toner category. So I'll keep you posted on how this goes. So I went into Sephora looking for a new cushion foundation. Um, I just have been really into cushions lately. I only brought my M Cosmetics cushion foundation to Korea and I wore that and it was all I needed, honestly. But you know, I wanted to play around. And sometimes it can be hard to find my shade in Korea because even by Korean standards, I'm tan, uh, which is saying a lot. And there are not a lot of deeper offerings. But I was going through the aisles. I came across the YSL aisle. And of course they have their, um, their cushion that's really popular in the black like leather version. But then I saw this and this is new and it's very sexy. So this is the Touche Claw Glow Packed Cushion. And it's called a high cover mesh foundation. And just, just wait till you see this, it's very luxurious. How gorgeous is this cushion compact? It's pink leather, it has the YSL embossing, it's refillable. And importantly, they had my shade, which is B30. I think there are five shades in this range and this is the deepest one. Again, it's, it's sad but this is what the compact looks like. It's very beautiful. I don't know how I'm gonna bring myself to use this. And I don't wanna open it quite yet, but this is an interesting like trend in cushion foundations that I actually noticed through a lot of brands is that they have a mesh netting. So rather than the cushion itself, if you've used these, like rather than it being a sponge, Actually, let me show you like, so for example, I have the M Cosmetics cushion here and you can see it's like an actual sponge that's soaked with product. This cushion has a mesh netting with the product underneath the mesh. So you push your cushion puff down on the mesh and that's how it transfers product like onto and like evenly across the um, cushion puff. So haven't tried it. I'll let you know, um, maybe I'll do a try on with everything that I got, like all the new makeup. I also have so many packages to go through. Um, they really piled up these last few weeks and there are a lot of new beauty launches. So you'll, you'll see that stuff soon. But I just wanted to show you what this looks like because it's so beautiful. And I'm not even like a designer, like logo person, but something about this, when I saw it, I was like, yeah, I need to have that, so. We'll see how it goes. 
And then uh, on my very last day, I went to Tamburin's, which is um, like a fragrance house, I guess you could say. They're like the sister brand to Gentle Monster. I did get something from Gentle Monster. Actually, I'll show you that after this. Um, and I realized they first started out with like body and home products, so a lot of hand creams, um, lotions, soaps, candles, that sort of thing. I grabbed a lot of stuff from them last year that I'm still loving and enjoying. They do the coolest hand cream formulas. Um, I'll link my haul from last year below if you're curious to see. But I saw they now have perfumes and they didn't have these last year and I was really, really excited to try them. And I sprayed this one on my hand and instantly I knew it was the one. So I just got a small size of this. It's called White Darjeeling. And the notes are Camo uh, La Lale, Lale, L A L E, don't know what that is. Burga Sandal Suede Pear. Oh, wait, no. These are the names of all of their perfumes. So these are not the notes <laughs> of this perfume. Let me pull them up real quick. I was like, wait. This doesn't sound right. Um, Tamburin's unfortunately is not available in the US. They're a very like chic Korea exclusive brand, but um, the notes in White Darjeeling are, it's described as an aromatic green, top note is champagne, middle notes are black tea and peach, and the base notes are musk and sandalwood. It's just very intoxicating. It's green, it's kind of creamy. It has the tea note from and I think that's what makes it a little bit creamy. Okay, that was a struggle. Okay, so this is what the deluxe size looks like. I think it's um, 10 milligrams or 10 milliliters, I mean. Oh my God, everything's hard to open. Okay, this is, yeah, 10 milliliters, 0.34 ounces. It's actually a really nice size um, and very chic. You can see this is what it looks like. And I'm gonna spray it now because I haven't sprayed it since I was in store. And I did buy some clothes. Um, I got a few pairs of pants, a skirt, some tops. Um, but I'm not gonna show you those, but I will show you my new Gentle Monster sunglasses. I went into their home day store, which I hadn't been to before. Um, I've been to a couple of their other stores. Um, and they do have stores here in the US, by the way. I think there are five locations, including one in LA and one in New York. But um, I wanted to get a new pair. So I tried on a bunch. I posted like a TikTok about my shopping experience. All of their like stores are concept stores. So they're very artsy and they have these really interesting installations. These are the ones I got. So this style is called Oslo and they're dirty because I wore them to Coachella last weekend. Um, but they are a plastic frame, but they're tinted, they're rose tinted, and they look like this on the side. They're pretty sleek, pretty minimal, and they're rose tinted like that. And all of Gentle Monster, I mean, they're Koreans designing for Koreans and a global audience, but they work really well with low nose bridges. So if you're like me and you have a low nose bridge, um, these could be a good fit for you. I got them for about, I think with the exchange rate, maybe like $70, $75 cheaper than they are in the, oh wait, no. Maybe more than that. Cheaper than they are in the US. Um, I think I got these for, I think these are 250 US dollars on the website and they're 250,000 won um, in Korea. So it's obviously cheaper to buy there. But still, I think um, for that price point, they're really, really well-made glasses. I got another pair last year that I do wear all the time. Um, and they're really lightweight, but sturdy and durable. And yeah, I thought this was like a very classic shape, but the lenses made them a little bit more edgy. And I have a lot of black sunglasses, so I wanted to get something different. And they all come in like a really nice case. Um, I already have fucked up, oh, sorry. Um, I already messed up <laughs> the white case, which I knew I would the second I got it. I was like, oh, it's so beautiful, but like, I don't know. I shoved it in my bag at Coachella and it's already scratched. So that's okay, these things happen. So that is really it. I mean, I had a great time in Korea. I ate so much good food. Um, 
some of my favorite meals that I've ever had, like in all of my time in Korea. I went to this amazing restaurant that had this incredible kejang, um, which if you don't know is like marinated crab. So it's raw, but it's marinated. And they had this soy marinated crab and I went with two friends and we ordered like a platter and it was gone within minutes. I mean, it was like one of my favorite meals I've ever had. Um, I also had mango pingsu and I was staying in Myeongdong. So I went to their night market, got a few different things to eat, you know, ice cream. I had takoyaki. I had a few other things. And I also spent some time in Hongdae, which was really nice. I mean, Hongdae is very hip, very cute. If you've never been to Seoul, you should definitely go there. I had a really nice afternoon there by myself, like wandering around. I walked into Adder Air, which is a Korean designer and this is one of their like concept stores. I don't have anything from them, but they're definitely a designer that I'm looking at because they have these really interesting kind of like, this like unisex edgy style, a little bit grungy, a little bit like streetwear, but it's very high end and it's also tailored stuff as well. So I do have my eye on them. I didn't get anything on this trip, but I wanted to see their store in person. I went to a lot of amazing coffee shops. I mean, cafe culture in Korea is amazing. Coffee culture in Korea is amazing. I think I've read before that they're the most caffeinated city per capita globally. And it's true, if you walk around Seoul, everybody has a coffee in hand. Everybody has an iced coffee in hand specifically. It's like a thing and you can get amazing coffee anywhere. It's it's so nice. I was drinking way too much coffee. So yeah, I just wanted to give you guys like a taste of what the trip was like. And um, I mean, I have a lot of thoughts and I'm still processing parts of the trip for myself and what it meant to me, but it was a really amazing opportunity to just be there and spend time on my own. And, you know, I hadn't traveled alone internationally in a few years. I have traveled internationally by myself before, but I hadn't done it since like before COVID times. So it felt kind of like, I felt kind of anxious and out of practice. And then the second I was there, I just remembered um, what a privilege it is to be able to do that and spend time by yourself and be in a new place alone and navigating things for the first time. I mean, not that soul is new to me, but there were parts of soul that were new to me. Um, and yeah, I do think you, you kind of like confront new and old parts of yourself as you're traveling. So it was a really lovely experience and um, I'm excited that I got to share parts of it with you. So if you have any questions about Seoul, about traveling there, about K-beauty, anything that I grabbed that you want me to review, let me know. And I will see you in the next video with lots of new content coming soon. So I'll see you then. Bye.